Hey everybody, um, this video is going to concentrate on linking to external websites from your course and I'm going to be showing you about four different examples. This might get to be a bit of a long video, so feel free to have your page open and this video open in two different tabs and just kind of go back and forth and you can pause and try some things. So um, I'm also going to show you samples from various different levels to meet the needs of both elementary and secondary teachers. All right, um, on Jill Heath's first grade Tangland Elementary page, she links to websites um, in this block called first grade reading websites, and she's got the math ones. Um, if you think about it, one of the advantages of doing something like this for these little learners is if they do have um, either laptops or if they have um, uh, iPads that they're using, if they have easy access on those devices to her web page or they know how to get there, then this is a way for her to direct these guys um, right to these practice pages without them having to type in the web addresses or do any sophisticated Google searching. So I can see that as being um, very helpful for those little learners. So the way that she did this is by turning editing on and if you want to make individual links on your page then the command that you're going to use within the block is you're going to go under add a resource and you're going to go down to page. Oh I'm sorry I'm wrong. You're going to go down to URL um, which is the same thing as a web address. So um, I'm not going to go to that right now. Instead, I'm going to show you what it looks like all filled out because if I go and click right here on the update button, you'll see what the page looks like that you have to fill out. So what you're going to want to put in is you're going to want to put in a name. I would generally put the name of the website or whatever, whatever the website title is. And then you might want to go in and add a short description. In fact, I think you have to because I think that star means required field. So this might be carried over from the old Moodle, which is why she didn't have to put something in here. So you'd want to put in something like practice um, uh, math uh, or reading skills um, through competition. All right. That's probably not the best description. I would probably not put a check mark there or you'll see the description on your home page, which might make your home page look busy. This is where you're going to paste the link. So you will have wanted to go to that page first, copy the link and paste it. And um, I don't know exactly what these things mean. You can click on this yellow thing if you want to go into that more deeply. And then ultimately you are going to save and you are going to return to the course. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So that is the first type of link. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is you start to get into that a long scroll because if you have a lot of links, then your page gets longer and longer and longer. Um, so let me show you some alternatives. Um, one alternative is to cluster or group your links. So for example, if I go on John Wilson's site, uh, by the way, for those of you that are not aware of this, everything that's gray right now is hidden content that John intentionally hid um, so that his page is not as dense for his students. You can hide and show things over time. So if something's not rele relevant at a certain time, you can hide it. So if I go here and I go to math video tutorials, what you're going to see is that it opens a new page and on that page are several different links. So that's kind of cool because then you don't have to have them all individually on the page. You can cluster them and you reduce how long your page ends up being so that students don't have to scroll as much. So let me show you how he did this. He would turn editing on and he would go to the appropriate block. So I'm going to go down to the math block and he'd go under add a resource and he'd add a page. So um, and that brings up a number of fields that you have to fill in. So let me show you those fields by going into con updating on this one. So the key here is that you're going to have a title 
And then again, you're going to have a description, which I think he was grandfathered into this without having the required field filled in here. Um, I'm just going to type in math videos for right now. And what he did with each of these that he listed is that he highlighted them. And then on your editing toolbar, you can click on link. And if you click on insert a link, you can paste a link right here. And that's how he got this link on that page. Now, I always like to say for the target, open in a new window. That means if the student goes in here and clicks on one of those links, it will open a new window or a new tab for that student. So they do not leave Moodle, which I think is important um, because then if they finished with that particular web resource, they could go back to this list and they wouldn't have to uh, be lost or have trouble. I'm trying to get there. I would ignore all of these things and you say save and return to a course. So that's how you cluster them, um, several web links on a particular uh, web page link. All right, I'm going to close that one and then we're going to take a look at um, this page of Tony Schwartz's. So what Tony did is instead of um, having one option you can do is you can, instead of having them in the topic outline blocks, every once in a while you're going to want to have them outside of the topics because these are um, more generalized as opposed to unit specific links. And she also wanted to throw in a little image there, which is, I think, uh, very pleasing to the eye. So this is with an HTML block. So the way that you do that is you turn editing on and then you scroll to the bottom of the page where you can add a block and you're going to add an HTML block. And then if you go into configuring the block, this is quite a bit like configuring the page in that she gave the uh, block a title and then she made these hot links and she did that by highlighting the word Mythbusters and then clicking on insert a link and then she pasted the link. Again, I would always change this to open in a new window. I'm not going to do that right now because um, this is really her course. Uh, we will be talking about adding images later or you could um, look for that in the course if you want to learn about that now, but I'm going to skip over that part. Um, notice that she's also bolded text. That is another command on the editing toolbar right here. What you can do is you can also define in here where you want this HTML block to appear. So if you want it at, on the right side, you choose right. If you want it on the left side, you could do that as well. And the default weight, um, the smaller the number, the higher it will be on the page. And then this is, you can choose to have this appear on just your home page, like your main course page, or you can have it appear when um, um, individuals go to other resources in your page as well. So um, you click on Save Changes, and that is where you could get hot links to other pages in an HTML block. That's another idea. Lastly, um, I was working last year with Mr. Ingham on his page, and what I decided to do with the second grade page is I really wanted to narrow it down to the very, very, very best websites for each of the content areas, and I actually put that content um, within the blocks. And now this page is under construction, so I do intend to have some things above the best hits. So that's not going to be the only thing in these blocks, but the way that I did that is if you turn editing on, if you want content with more text to appear in the topic block, you can add a resource and you can put in a label. And a label would simply allow you, I'll show you what you can do here, um, to put in straight text and hot links in this case and I also added small images and a label will instead of the student clicking on the label excuse me instead of the uh, student clicking on the resource and opening a whole new page that text or that content appears in that block you don't have to get to it via a click if you did use a label like this um, 
you would definitely, definitely want to keep it to not a lot of content because otherwise your page will look too busy. So you'd have to be very careful with that. And I was thinking kind of systematically about, okay, this is just going to be an element for each of the web pages. Over time, I would have two or three best hits for each of these subject level uh, areas. So that was my idea with this one. I hope that that's given you... Um, some good ideas. Um, I'm, on Mr. Ingham's page there's also an HTML block with an image that was added in a hot link with the idea to a, two or three high quality word games on the web. If you have any questions do not hesitate to contact me. Hope that helps.